Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, respected audience. Today, my topic of discussion is corneal new vascularization. Corneal new vascularization is basically defined as an abnormal growth of the new vessels on the avascular structure of the cornea. This is a beautiful slide showing the corneal new vascularization in protemporally. You can see the blood vessels coming in the form of uh, efferents making a loop and then they are making afferents so blood is coming and going from the cornea and they are occupying basically the infrotemporal area of the uh, this eye so if we talk about uh, different causes of this uh, corneal neovascularization abnormal growth of blood vessels on the cornea it may be infection degeneration uh, liver stem cell deficiency, it may be because of any chemical injuries, basically the damage of the liver stem cells, all these things uh, can lead to corneal new vascularization. But if we talk about the different infections, then uh, viral is the number one cause, herpes virus, uh, and uh, causes this uh, new vascularization. And it is followed up by bacterial, acanthamoeba, limbal stem cell deficiencies, and even uh, uh, penetrating, penetrating keratoplasties when they develop failures, they also develop new vascularization. So if we declassify this corneal neovascularization, it may be superficial corneal neovascularization, it may be deep corneal neovascularization. And sometimes it make a form of the vascular penis. Superficial corneal new vascularization usually continues beyond the limbus. But when we talk about the deep corneal new vascularization, they cannot be followed up after the limbus. So cornea is basically an avascular structure. There are no blood vessels and there is a beautiful balance created over there between angiogenic uh, factors and anti-endogenic endogenic factors but whenever this balance is disrupted uh, cornea is prone to development of these new vessels over there whenever there is a corneal injury the epithelial cells are replaced by the limbal stem cells and uh, that area is usually healed but sometimes there is a process of apoptosis in the limbal stem cells and they also undergo the process of damage and death. So in such circumstances, sometimes the conjunctival cells move over there to cover up the deficiency, cover up that defect. But the problem with conjunctival cells is that they have uh, goblet cells and they are relatively more vascularized. So when these conjunctival cells cover the uh, corneal epithelial defect, uh, the surface becomes irregular and it has got uh, weak tensile strength and even the clarity is not that the same as with the epithelial cells covering and replacing the damaged area. Different studies have been conducted about the different uh, growth factors which are involved in this uh, whole process of developing vessels. So interleukin 8 has been identified and it has been studied over there that uh, if the strength of interleukin 8 is 400 nanograms per cornea, then the chances of uh, developing the corneal new vascularization are minimal. But if interleukin 8 concentration goes to 2 to 40 nanograms per cornea, then there are substantial uh, chances of developing this problem. So in pathophysiology, these growth factors, this is all about the growth factors. They are a beautiful balance. Whenever it is disturbed, uh, this problem occurs. So there are different treatment modalities to control the new vessels. Uh, these may be controlled with uh, anti-VGF. These may be controlled with uh, steroids, photodynamic therapy. All these things can be applied, but unless and until we control the root cause, uh, these vessels will keep on developing. 
So sometimes the inflammation is a very important cause that is uh, creating uh, over their inflammation and the ischemia and all these things which lead to the uh, growth factors and then development of these blood vessels. These blood vessels which when come up to the cornea they cause a diffraction, light scattering. They also lead to the deposition of lipid leading to lipid keratopathy. And uh, as I earlier told this is one of uh, if we're not uh, treated before keratoplasty 30% of uh, corneal graft failures can happen because of these blood vessels. So lasers can be applied specifically at those blood vessels and uh, at that area the hemoglobin is uh, absorbs those uh, laser lights and then leads to the coagulation of blood vessels. If we talk about the photodynamic therapy, free radicals are produced, oxygen free radicals at that specific blood vessels and that can also lead to the arborization of the, these new vessels. Injections, uh, subconjunctival can be given, uh, steroids, anti-VGF, and even topical steroids can be given to control this inflammation. But uh, the problem is that these topical steroids can lead to glaucoma and increased intraocular pressure if they are used for a longer period of time. Antivascular endothelial growth factors like uh, bevacizumab, Avastin, it is uh, capable of affecting and controlling all types of receptors for angiogenesis and uh, very effective. But the thing is, it can be only given to the active vessels when the things are developing over there, when there is an activity. At that place, it is very beneficial with its own possible complications, of course. But uh, if you see over there mature, fully developed blood vessels, then at that uh, stage you have to go for uh, uh, diathermy. Monopolar diathermy, it is used. The needle is passed tangentially over there in that specific area. And then small, that uh, coagulation is done over there to make the whitening of that area in mature, fully developed blood vessels. And then uh, the collagen in that specific area undergoes reorganization uh, and the shrinking occurs over there and those blood vessels settle down. But all these things are temporarily unless and until we control the uh, risk factors. So even the many physicians have applied the tetracyclines, doxycyclines because they are matrix metalloproteinase inhibitors. And they have also very effective role in uh, controlling the new vascularization. Uh, it can be used uh, topically also. So that lead to an idea of combination therapy. And I mean, any, all these factors can be applied. Anti-VEGF, topical steroids, and matrix metalloproteinase inhibitors like tetracyclines and doxycyclines. So in this way, all different mechanisms which are contributing to the new vascularization are targeted. Apart from this, uh, there is quite chances and uh, research work is being done on gene therapy. Different viral vectors have been tried to deliver the medicine over there and to control all these new vessels by gene therapy, but it is in, still in the process of development and research. I want to thank my respected audience for attending my today presentation on corneal neovascularization in which we discuss different pathophysiology, its management. So uh, I also want you to, to go through these, these articles which were published in Romanian Journal of Ophthalmology. The article is Corneal Neovascularization Update on Pathophysiology, Investigations and Management. And if you want to read about uh, the growth factors, interleukin-8, it was a very good old study that was published uh, in American Journal of Pathology named a factor, corneal factor, that induces new vascularization. So I also want to thank my respected audience for attending today's presentation. Thank you.